I remember you well in the Chelsea Hotel. You were talking so brave and so sweet. I don't think there ever has been anything like the Chelsea Hotel. I can't think of another artist community this large and this this old. Those were the reasons that was New York. I'm Cheryl Tippins. I'm the author of Inside the Dream Palace, The Life and Times of New York's Legendary Chelsea Hotel. This hotel was completely different from any other hotel in New York. In the 50s, we had Jack Kerouac stay here for a night with Gore Vidal, Dylan Thomas, the poet. Whenever he toured through the United States, he made the Chelsea his second home. Bob Dylan created many of the songs for his seminal album, Blonde on Blonde, when he was living here in the 60s. Arthur C. Clarke wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey on the 10th floor and worked with Stanley Kubrick up there. In the 70s, when the, the city was going through such a hard time financially, the hotel became more run down and the punk musicians could afford to move in. And and Sid Vicious and Nan Nancy Spungen, of course, famously moved in. The Hotel Chelsea was built in the Gilded Age in the 1880s in New York. The way the, the Chelsea began was one of the most interesting aspects of the book to me because when I came to it, all I knew about the Chelsea was the 60s counterculture movement and all of the folk singers going into the punk movement, what everybody thinks of when they think about the Chelsea Hotel. But it turned out that the Chelsea was based on the utopian ideas of the French writer Charles Fourier. They were ideals that focused on diversity of the population, to constantly mingle and socialize with every other type of person in the community, because this, they believed, would create a cultural spark. All right, my man. <laughs> he looks like he's all set to go. <laughs> Stanley Bard, the manager, was probably the most dearly loved of all of the people who have been in charge of the hotel in its entire history. He had such a talent for choosing who to put in the rooms, how to make the social climate of the hotel stimulating and exciting for the people who live there. A lot of the work that the artist did was in the lobby, and in a way, it was like putting pictures on your mother's refrigerator door. Drop our cheese in a fix. Amphetamine has made her sick. The downward slide that uh, the residents experienced, I would say, started with the 70s. And really, it was the influx of drug use. A lot of drug users followed the rock bands in, and a lot of dealers. And then when the dealers came in, there were shootings, there was crime. Chelsea girls. Now, of course, with the economy surging, the opposite trouble happened. The hotel became worth an enormous amount of money just before the crash. And so the majority of the shareholders of the hotel decided they wanted to sell it. And for two years, it's, it's been vacant. I don't think it's over. I don't think it depends on an era. I think it's more the physical structure of the building and its location in the middle of a city. I think it's going to be very different, but I think this is just one more period in its life. I remember you well in the Chelsea Hotel That's all I don't even think of you that often